Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the tracheal system, gas exchange in the trachea, ventilating the tracheal system, and then we'll finish with a summary. So insects use a slightly different method of getting gases into the cells and using a different system of gas exchange than humans or fish. And even though they're very small organisms compared to us, they tend to be highly active because they're often whizzing around and because they are often flying around and doing lots of different things, they require a constant supply of oxygen and removal of CO2. So one of the common features that insects have is called a waxy exoskeleton. So whereas most animals have a skeleton inside of them, these creatures have an exoskeleton, which is like a hard outer coating. And this helps them with some protection and also helps water stay inside their body in case they need to keep this for other solutions. So an exoskeleton is found on the outside of their bodies. Because of this waxy exoskeleton, gases in the air can't just effectively diffuse into their cells, they actually bounce back off. So oxygen can't get through this waxy layer because it's just too thick and the material isn't right. And CO2 that builds up in their cells can't escape either. So again, they need some sort of efficient gas exchange system that allows these gases to be exchanged at their interface. So they have evolved a specific type of exchange surface called a tracheal system. And this delivers oxygen directly to every tissue and it removes CO2 as well. So we'll be going through some of the anatomy of this, but in general, it has openings to the airways known as the spiracles. And again, we'll look at where these can be found on the body of the insect. And then the spiracles are the openings that lead to larger airways in the system, which are called trachea. And then these trachea divide into smaller tubes, which are known as the tracheoles. So we're going to discuss this system in a bit more detail now. So how does gas become exchanged in the tracheal system? So it occurs mostly in fluid that exists at the end of the tracheoles, called tracheal fluid and it exists just inside the ends of these tracheoles facing towards the body. So remember what we have is we have the main tubes which are the tracheae or trachea. These divide into tracheoles which are much smaller. So the trachea would be this tube here and these smaller tubes would be the tracheoles. This is analogous to in the human lungs where we have one trachea and then several bronchi and bronchioles dividing off of that as well. This is the opening to the outside world and this would be the spiracle. So essentially what happens is there is fluid at the end of these tracheoles which is in contact with the fluid and the cells of the actual body of the insect. So this fluid is where the gas exchange occurs and this is tracheal fluid. So when the insect is resting and it isn't really doing much, the liquid seeps into the tracheoles from the surrounding cells. So at this point the liquid is entering the ends of those tracheoles and lining the airways at the very ends there. When the insect starts doing things and becomes active, the muscles that it's using draws up the fluid into the body away from the airways. And this fluid will have oxygen from the air, and this can then be used by the cells in respiration. So if you imagine now what's happening, the fly has become active, and it's using lots of various muscles. And because of this, the muscles are sort of using a suction technique to get this fluid out of the tracheoles into the body of the insect, and then this fluid contains oxygen, and the oxygen can diffuse into the cells that need it. So another thing that this movement of muscles does is that it lowers the pressure in the tracheoles, drawing more air in from the outside. So if you imagine the muscles are moving, the fluid's being drawn out of the tracheoles, again using that oxygen, and then what happens is because the fluid is leaving, the pressure now goes down. And because the pressure has gone down over here, it's going to draw air in from the outside, through these openings which, as we've labelled before, are the spiracles. Finally, the third thing that we can observe when they're becoming active is that they've increased the surface area available for oxygen to diffuse down through the tracheal walls directly. So remember, again going back to the fluid, the fluid's been drawn out by the muscular activity. Air is now flowing in through the spiracles because of this new pressure loss. And what they've also done is they've increased surface area of the tracheals overall. It may seem like a by a tiny amount, but overall this would add up to quite a lot. And now any oxygen that is entering the tracheals is able to diffuse out directly into some of the fly's tissues. As well as oxygen coming in, of course, we're allowing carbon dioxide to be diffusing back out to the air. So the tracheal system can also be ventilated, and this is really important for the introduction of fresh air. So this tends to happen in larger insects, so they can ventilate their tracheal system and they have several different mechanisms for doing this. So in the tracheal system sometimes you can observe these air sacs or swellings of the airways and these can be squeezed by flight muscles to push the air in and out. 
So if you imagine the fly is moving around or flying, this is a muscle, and the muscle is going to be pushing and pulling on this air sac. And as it does this, air is going to be squeezed in and out, and here's the spiracle opening to the outside world, constantly refreshing the air and making it fresh. The flight muscles can also alter the volume of the insect's thorax or the chest cavity to ventilate the tracheal systems. So you can imagine that the wings are moving and various muscles of flying are altering the shape of the thorax. And as the thorax expands, it can reduce the volume and help draw air in to those spiracles. Some insects have a more specialised breathing mechanism, and in particular this refers to larger insects like grasshoppers. And this is particularly specialised in the way that it works. The first thing that happens is their abdomen is expanded by different muscles, and this closes some of the spiracles at the back of their body whilst opening those at the front. So what we have is the abdomen expands and the spiracles contract on this end. So we actually have a closure of spiracles at the back of the body, but an entering of air in the front of the body or at the abdomen. And then once they contract the abdomen again, in the next part of the cycle, they open up the spiracles at the rear and close those at the front. So now they've alternatively opened and closed these spiracles. And now that these are open, the CO2 filled air can exit these spiracles. So it's an alternating opening of back spiracles or front spiracles, which drives oxygen in and then carbon dioxide out. And this is a specialized breathing mechanism found in some larger insects. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.